First up, we have Khadijah Anderson. So, uh, Khadijah, as uh, one question before you get going. Um, what is one food you have regretted eating for breakfast? Hmm, probably Chipotle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me get this going for you. It's good if you're hungover, though. <laughs> so did you have it this morning? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready? Yep. Wait, wait for it. Oh, oh. let's go. Uh-oh, tech problems. Hold on. <laughs> Joy, of course. What? Mm. Here we go. Five years, and it's never had a problem until <laughs> today. It's beautiful. <laughs> oh, thank you. Somebody can read numbers. <laughs> All right. Now we're going to get started. All right, you ready? Mm -hmm. Hello. My name is Khadija Anderson, and I'm a manager at Blackstone Technology Group. Today we're going to discuss an internal initiative that myself and a few others within the company started, the Blackstone Federal Employee Council. Two years ago, I presented at Ignite Talk at DevOps Days DC on diversity and inclusion in technology. You might remember my thesis. Diversity is being invited to the party. Inclusion is being asked to dance. This talk inspired a conversation at Blackstone about how we can ensure we have and maintain a diverse and inclusive environment in our own space. This then turned into a larger discussion about ensuring all employees within the company have a voice, as well as an avenue to share new ideas, thoughts, and to provide feedback. Thus was born the Blackstone Federal Employee Council. Our mission, to be the cornerstone of employee engagement by lifting up all voices, creating leadership opportunities, and devising a truly inclusive environment. We're fortunate enough at Blackstone to have such an open and encouraging environment that it didn't take long for leadership to be on board with us starting the council. We presented our missions, goals, plans, set up a regular cadence to meet with leadership to provide updates, and then we were off. We determined that the council's primary goals are to ensure all voices are heard, increase loyalty to the brand, increase employee engagement, create leadership opportunities, and ensure a truly inclusive environment. Starting with employee engagement, we created an email inbox for employees to reach out to the council to share their ideas and to provide feedback. All members of the council have access to the mailbox and can respond accordingly, but it's the responsibility of the chair and deputy chair to manage it. I'll go into more detail on those roles shortly. We also host monthly open sessions for employees to present their new ideas for innovation or changes that they might have before going to leadership. This can range from new project ideas, suggestions for internal improvements, or general questions and feedback. The format for these presentations is simple. Five minutes or less per presentation, and five minutes for Q&A at the end of each presentation. We also provide a PowerPoint template for those who want to use a PowerPoint to present their idea to the employees and the rest of the council. To ensure that these sessions remain on target, we also provide guidance on what not to bring to the council. No pay or compensation discussions, no personal issues, nothing with legal implications, and nothing that you would discuss with HR. Pretty self-explanatory, right? The, internal, the employee council meets internally every two weeks to review ideas that have been suggested in person, via email, or at the most recent open session. We also plan for the next open session, and we discuss and review and provide feedback on ideas that have been recommended by leadership before going out to employees. We also provide ideas for feedback for those who have presented on the, for the Employee Council open session. This feedback may include recommending presenting the idea to leadership, doing more research, or not moving forward with the proposed idea at all. As you can imagine, creating the Employee Council took several iterations before getting it off the ground. Uh, but to ensure that we have representation for all employees within the, within the council, each member of the council represents a different practice area within our company. Our practice areas include impact, which includes functional folks such as myself, 
Forge, which includes technical folks like our developers and engineers, Studios, which includes our creative team like marketing and communications, and Internal, which includes our recruiters, capture team, and office management. Each member of the council was recommended by one of our practice area leads and then vetted by leadership. There are a total of five members on the council. By the way, having an odd number of members is great when you need to vote on things. Of these five members, there's a self-selected chair and deputy chair. The chair is responsible for leading and, leading and scheduling internal employee council meetings, scheduling open sessions, monitoring the mailbox, and also taking notes during meetings. The deputy chair carries out the chair's responsibilities if the chair is unavailable and as needed. The term for each employee council is one calendar year. We had initially planned for a six month term, but this didn't quite allow enough time for the council to form, storm, norm, and eventually perform. The 2018 Employee Council hosted five open sessions and provided feedback to leadership on a number of internal initiatives, including our performance planning, our training program, and our career model, and a number of other smaller wins, just to name a few. Unlike the first Employee Council, the 2019 Employee Council had to apply for membership first. They were then vetted by the existing council, then vetted by leadership, before ultimately being selected. As I said, this is still a work in progress, but I'm proud to have been a part of something so impactful. If you have any questions on the council's processes, procedures, or anything else, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.